Hey, Caleb, how are you? Hey, Michelle, I'm pretty good. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. I'm feeling a little foolish because I made a mistake earlier today, but I'm going to get over it. How about you? I'm doing all right. We all make mistakes. It's a thing that happens. Oh, thank you. You're very kind. So guess what time it is? I'm hoping it's time to grow with God. It is time to grow with God with me. Yes. <laughs> I like the puppet mode. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with Michelle and with... And with Caleb. Excellent. Oh, so we have a gospel today. Yeah. And it's kind of a different gospel. Um, mm. Cause there's guy, he did this thing called a paraphrase. Mm -hmm. So he took words and he tried to make them simpler and tell the story in a way that it's a little bit more modern a setting. Uh, and, and we're using it today, but I think we're going to read it and go, Hmm, there might be a different way we would have done this. So, it's called a paraphrase, not an okay. actual translation. So let's see if I can find it. And we all, can I read it? Do you mind? Yes, go ahead. Excellent. Maybe I'll do a really good job at it. I'll feel really good about it. So this is from Matthew's gospel. Mm -hmm. Don't be intimidated. Eventually, everything is going to be out in the open. And everyone will know how things really are. So don't hesitate to go public now. Don't be bluffed into silence by the threats of bullies. There's nobody, there's nothing they can do to your soul, your core being. Save your fear for God, who holds your entire life, body and soul, in God's hands. What's the price of a pet canary? Some loose change, right? And God cares what happens to it even more than you do. He pays even greater attention to you, down to your last detail, even numbering the hairs on your head. So don't be intimidated by all this bully talk. You're worth more than a million canaries. Stand up for me against world opinion, and I'll stand up for you before my Father in heaven. If you turn tail and run, do you think I'll cover for you? Don't think I've come to make life cozy. I've come to cut, make a sharp knife cut between son and father, daughter and mother, bride and mother-in-law, cut through those cozy domestic arrangements and free you for God. Well-meaning family members can be your worst enemy. If you prefer father over mother, or if you prefer father or mother over me, you don't deserve me. If you prefer son or daughter over me, you don't deserve me. If you don't go all the way with me through thick and thin, you don't deserve me. If your first concern is to look after yourself, you'll never find yourself. But if you forget about yourself and look to me, you'll find both yourself and me. That's a lot. Yeah, a lot of things were said there. There's a lot of things in there. And that's a paraphrase, right? So. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that a little bit more. So did I show you the gospel sign? We did the gospel, right? Okay. We did the gospel. Excellent. So now we have, actually, I think this might be my favorite part of growing with God. <laughs> what does it mean? What does that mean? What? <laughs> what does that mean? So you wonder about something in there that what it what does it might what what does it mean yeah i did um so there was the section that said um save your fear for god mm. what do you think that means well i don't think we should be afraid of god um but what i think he's trying to say is that we should be really really super paying attention so when I was a little girl, you know, I had five brothers. I still have four brothers, but I had five brothers growing up. And my brother Richard loved to scare me. Mm -hmm. So um, when I came into my bedroom, he would pop out from the closet and scare me or um, hide under the bed and, blah, you know, and scare me. So when I went into my bedroom, I was like a little bit afraid. But what it made me do was like, really be attention like i look at around like where's my brother richard is he? <laughs> you know so i would be really really 
dialed in like what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think the man who did this paraphrase used the word fear. I don't think that's really what he meant. I think he meant if you're, if you walk around being afraid of something you don't know, that's one thing you should actually stop doing that. You should actually be really paying attention to God because God is going to be there with you, even when mm. you're afraid. So don't, don't waste your fear on that. Waste your, spend your attention on God. So I think that's what it means. I like that. Yeah, I think that's more helpful. So I heard a word in here that I don't use very often, and I was wondering mm -hmm. what does that mean? And it's the word cozy. Cozy. Cozy is a word that has a few different meanings. Okay. Um, so most of the time when people use the word cozy, they mean comfortable. Um, but there are some other definitions. Okay. Cozy is also that feeling you get when you're going to sleep, when you're nestled up in a blanket. <laughs> I like being cozy. Yes, and you're, you're on your way to sleep, that feels cozy. Mm -hmm. um, the other definition of cozy is when you are avoiding something that's difficult. Oh. That's also being cozy. Mm -hmm. So when it says that Jesus didn't come to make things cozy, Jesus didn't come so that we could fall asleep. Oh. So that we could avoid things. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's exactly what you were saying. Jesus came to help us pay attention. Um, and to do God's work in the world. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. I like that. It's kind of the, sort of the sort of the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. We're moving right along. You ready? All right. Here it comes. Questions. Questions. We have questions. Yeah. Many questions. Oh. <sighs> Let's see. Um, I had a question. Okay. Um, one of the things that Jesus says in the paraphrase that we read was, um, don't be bluffed into silence. Why do you think we would be bluffed into silence? Well, I, I've been bluffed into silence. Um, when I was little, when I was a little girl, um, I would play with these two other little girls and, um, I remember one time one of them said to me, why do you dress like a boy? Mm. And I didn't dress like a boy. I dressed like Michelle. Mm -hmm. I wore clothes I really liked. Um, and that's what I wanted to wear. And instead of saying, I'm not dressed like a boy, I'm dressed like Michelle, which is kind of probably um, a much more truthful way of approaching it. I got kind of scared a little bit. And I don't think they were bullying me. They asked me a question, but I didn't want to answer it. So I kind of went, oh, well, I have uh, three older brothers and I get their hand-me-down. So that's what I'm just dressed like what, what I have, right? And that didn't let me be more connected to my friends. Like, I think if I had said to those girls, well, I don't dress like a boy. I just dress like me. They might have known me better. Um, mm -hmm. The same way God wants to be known better. Um, so I don't think I got bullied into silence. I, I kind of bullied myself into silence because I was afraid they wouldn't love me. Mm. You know? And so I didn't tell them the truth. So I stayed silent. I didn't lie to them. I just didn't tell. I stayed silent. So I think that's what he means. Um, have you ever done that or felt that? I have. It's hard sometimes um, to speak your truth, especially if you feel like someone doesn't want to hear it. Um, but I always feel bad, better after I do. Yeah, I think, it, and, it, and, and it, you helped me remember that story because you talked about cozy the way you did. Because it, it made me uncomfortable in um, a different way. Um, it made mm -hmm. me uncomfortable because I felt like, I, I'm, they don't know me and they don't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't like me if they did. So I won't say anything. So and then, then I made, then ultimately I felt really, really, really uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 So 
there's a funny way that um, this paraphrase, this new way of thinking about it. Um, so my question is, why do you think he said that um, if we didn't do exactly what God wants, we don't deserve God? Because I don't know if that's true or not. Do you think that's true? That's a very good question, Michelle. That's a very big question. Yeah, it is. Um, I think a few things are true. Um, first, I think God's love is huge. There's so, so much of God's love. God loves us so, so very much. Um, and I think there's nothing we do that earns that love. When I um, hear the word deserve, I think of earning. Like when I was younger and I would clean my room, I would earn uh, a dollar um, every time I clean my room. Um, or when I um, put uh, money into a vending machine and get chips, I earned the chips because I gave the machine my money. And that's not quite how God works. Um, it, God isn't a vending machine where if you put in three prayers, then you get a puppy. Um, that's not quite the way God works. We can't earn God's love in that way. But we also can't lose God's love that way. Um, God loves us so, so much. Um, and there's nothing we can do that can separate us from that love. God's love is with us always. Yeah. Um, and that's the part that I think did not end up in, in what we read. Um, we can't earn God's love, but yeah. also we can't lose God's love. Oh, I like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, if I were the person who wrote the paraphrase, yeah, yeah. Um, I might have said something like, Jesus didn't come to earth for us to be sleepy. Um, Jesus came for us to speak clearly, to speak our truth, um, and to work on God's behalf, even when it's difficult. I think that's what um, what it's getting at, that sometimes things are difficult. Mm. Um, and even then, um, God wants us to speak our truth and to do God's work. Um, and when we focus on God and focus on God's love, there are some amazing things that can happen. Yeah. It doesn't always happen the way that we think it's going to happen. It doesn't always look like what we think it's going to look like. It's not always that simple. It's yeah. not the puppy because you said three prayers. But I think there are amazing things um, that can happen yeah. when we are in line, in line with God's love. Oh, that makes sense. I like that. Hmm. I like the idea that God's not a vending machine. Yeah, I still didn't get a puppy. <laughs> you didn't get a puppy? Uh, well, I don't think you can have my puppy, but, you know. There you go. But, <laughs> I don't know, man. Christmas bonus. Maybe you get a puppy. True. True. <laughs> it could still happen. <laughs> it could happen. Um, so I have a silly question for you. Yeah. Do you really think God knows all the hairs on our head? Yeah. I think so. I have, I have a lot of hair. <laughs> you know, it's that. funny. I bet you you and I have the same um, number of hair on our head. Yours are just longer than mine. Mm-hmm. Yours are really long. They are. <laughs> I agree. I did a little checking, Michelle. Yeah. Um, and it turns out people usually have about 100,000 hairs on our heads. No. Are you sure about that? Right? That's a lot of hair. That is a lot of hair. So 100,000, that's more than would sit at St. Mark's. Yes, that's a lot more than what's it at St. Mark's. Hmm. Do you think you've ever been anywhere where there's 100,000 people too? Oh, I'm not sure I have. <laughs> well, I've been to the baseball stadium here, yeah. um, watch the Nationals play. How many people do you think sit there? I think uh, there's probably about 40,000 people okay. who could sit at the National Stadium. So it would be like almost, what, two and a half times? Mm -hmm. That's as many. And God knows every single one of my hairs on my head. Yeah, that's a whole lot of love for your hair. That is a whole lot of God love for my hair. I like it. <laughs> I got a lot of hair. You got more hair, though. <laughs> 
And your hair is even would be even longer if you didn't twist it into locks, right? That's true. That's true. Yeah. I just learned the word locks the other day from you. So that's that was I wanted to show up and use it. Yeah, it's a good word. It's a good word. All right. So I think we're done. We've done lots and lots of different things. There's just one last thing for us to do, and it's this. Let us pray. Let us pray. Do you mind if I pray this week? I would love it if you prayed this week. All right. Dear God, thank you, thank you, thank you for how much you love us. Thank you for the love you have, even for each hair on our head. Mm. Um, please help us to speak our truth, um, to not be asleep, to not avoid things that you would have us do, even when they're difficult, help us to persevere um, and to speak our truth and your truth to each other. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. That was a great prayer. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> so, pardon me? I feel better. I feel better too. I feel, I feel actually like I grew with God. I might be that much more grown with God. Yeah, I feel a little bit taller. <laughs> you, you, actually, you look a little taller. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> so, I will see you next week. Sounds great. All right. You take care. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Thank you, Michelle. All right. See you next week. Bye. Bye.